Okay, hello and welcome to uh, the first of uh, many uh, video tidbits about uh, our restart plan here at Streetsboro. My name is Andreas Johansson. I'm the Director of Operations. I have with us uh, Mr. Dalba, who's our superintendent. And uh, we're hoping to highlight a few things about our um, recently passed mask policy uh, that the Board of Education passed and what that means for, uh, for you as a staff member, for you as a student, and uh, the help that we might need from you, uh, our parents. So Mike, why don't you share with us the basic gists of the mask policy? Sure, I'd be happy to. So last month, the Board of Education passed a mask policy that reflected uh, Governor DeWine's and the CDC's recommendation that students in grades three through 12 and all adults um, actually wear a mask at all times during school. And the board, that particular board policy also went on to then recommend that students in grades uh, pre-K to two wear them um, as much as possible. Um, so that's how the uh, that's that's basically the the gist of the policy. There are some um, exceptions to that, but before I go on to those exceptions, um, we did find out um, yesterday from the governor that he's now um, uh, expecting students in grades kindergarten through 12 to wear masks. So we're going to actually have to revise our board policy. Um, so expect that to come. So um, in essence, every student and staff member in grades K through 12 will have to wear um, a mask to school. Um, some of those exceptions, Andreas, though, if a student or a staff member has a documented medical condition and they have a doctor's excuse, those are submitted to the superintendent and then I can grant um, uh, those particular students with appropriate medical conditions. Um, um, uh, I can grant them permission to not wear a mask, but then we are actually encouraging them to wear a face shield in, instead. Right. So that's, right. That's basically the highlights of the policy. It can be found online. And we've gotten a few questions too from, from you know, staff and our adults that work in the building. So what are the rules around, you know, I'm working in my office. Uh, you and I are both in our offices now with our doors closed. So does that mean we have to have a mask on? Uh, what's the policy? And one of the things that I've shared out with the teams that I work with is that if you're in the office by yourself, and you're not expecting anyone else, it's okay to take the mask on, but then be ready the moment's notice, especially over in our transportation office, food service, that uh, you're ready with a mask that you can put it on in case someone comes to visit. And that's true certainly here at the board office as well. But Mike, tell us a little bit about sort of a teacher working in a classroom, a secretary working at a front desk, what is it gonna look for them? Yeah, so we'll go through a few different scenarios. I think um, uh, that's a great question because people do need mask breaks um, and we'll talk about student mask breaks in a second, but when teachers are by themselves, as, as you indicated, in their room by themselves, nobody else is in there, the mask can come off and sit next to you on your desk. Um, but as you indicated, as soon as a student, another staff member, anyone walks into the room, that mask has to go on immediately. Secretaries, it's gonna be uh, a little more difficult because that is the hub of a building, that, that yeah. front office. Um, I'm, a secretary can certainly take her mask off um, um, when she's by herself, um, but um, she's going to have to immediately put it on as soon as um, a student, a staff member, a parent, anyone enters that office area. Um, the same with custodians. Um, I, oftentimes custodians are working by themselves, but during the school year, they work out in the hallways, they work among students, so they're gonna also have to wear those masks whenever they're around anybody. And, th and that's a good point. And so the key is to be really alert. I found myself that I try to make um, make some extra noise as I'm coming down the hallway. Maybe I'll whistle, especially now in the summertime that our that our buildings are a little bit more um, you know like empty, so that I don't surprise anyone. And then I will say I I've been wearing my mask um, sort of almost all the time, so that I don't run into a situation where where it doesn't uh, already appear on my face. Um, Mike, if you don't mind, I wanted to take a quick uh, minute just to show. Um, some folks how to wear a mask. So as you and I both, and we've had conversations over the summer, you know, we've seen all kinds of methods and models over the summer, uh, either out at a grocery store when you make a quick run uh, or, or in other places. And we find that a lot of people don't really um, wear them correctly. And so one of the things that the board policy states is that the face covering has to cover your nose and your mouth. And right. uh, one of the things that we've shared with a couple of uh, teams already is that that has to be key and sort of done and happening without you having to touch and readjust. Uh, we're working with our transportation staff who cannot constantly be touching their face because they got to drive a bus. And so just wanted to, to show how one of these uh, tri-ply masks work. Um, this is very similar to the masks that we'll have for the students if they forget it, staff member that might forget or a visitor to the building that just don't have any other masks. So tri-ply very commonly available, has a blue and a white side. Um, the blue side goes out and away from you 
And then you'll notice that most ones have a metal strip at the top that you can kind of shape and form. And so there, there are three things to remember, uh, strap it, pop it, crimp it. And so I'm gonna demonstrate how to do that, Mike, if you don't mind. Um, basically find the ear loops, they're elastic, they'll go on your face. And so you strap it. And by this, we see a lot of people wear a mask like this, right? We like either like that or, and, and that's the wrong thing. So you gotta strap it and then you gotta pop it and that's hold on to your nose, pop it down and that expands the mask and then you're gonna shape it around your nose. And so for us that wear uh, glasses, uh, Mike, you wear glasses every once in a while. I do it all the time. It seems like it's, I think it's a camera angle, but the key is to really expand it and then shape it around your nose so that it covers your nose and your mouth at the same time. And it stays there without you having to touch it. So Mike, I think you have a mask with you. Let's see what it looks like there. Well, again, I've already um, strapped it, popped it and formed it. So it's yep. already done. Um, you, Andre, something else I see people doing all the time when they take their masks off, the proper way to take the mask off is from the ear loops. You take that and then you lay it face down on whatever uh, surface that you're going to do. You don't touch the front of the mask. You don't handle the front of the mask because that's right. where the contaminants would be. Yep. So again, you grab by the ear loops, kind of bring it up and out. And then, you know, these masks are typically uh, one time use, but I find that I use one the whole day. Um, but I typically just keep it on my face the whole day. So that's something to, to remind yourself about as well. I like them because they're lightweight. Um, some of the cloth masks seem to not work for me because I have glasses and again, I get fogged up, but um, we just wanted to kind of demonstrate that. Anything else, Mike, that we need to know about a face mask? Obviously board policy, it's an expectation that all staff and kids wear a mask unless you, like you said, there's an exception to that. Um, even our kids that ride on the bus, right? And especially the kids that ride on the bus. On the bus, at the bus stops, um, everyone has to have masks. Um, yeah. Visitors to our buildings, which we won't be permitting into the buildings, but if you're coming to drop something off, pick a student up, you've got to have a mask on. Yeah, and so we're really leaning, uh, we're, we're asking our parents to, to sort of prepare for that. Uh, again, um, our recommendation would be, you know, put the mask on uh, before they even get to the bus stop in the morning, before they exit the car, if you're dropping your kids off, and we're certainly encourage you to do that as well. Uh, but make sure that you're ready. Um, make sure that you have a mask, make sure that you have an extra mask with you. Uh, and just know that we'll have some of these for, for you if you don't bring it. But we only have so many, you know, and so like we're hoping that because uh, they're in short supply, we're hoping that uh, you'll help us out. So thanks, Mike. That was a little bit about masks. If you have questions, uh, there is uh, an FAQ on our website. You're more than welcome to uh, submit some questions there, and then we'll try to answer those questions as we go along, either via a video session like this or uh, in writing on our website. Stay safe. Have a, a rocket day. Great. Thanks.